Hey guys, it's Mike. It's Dan. You're watching the Double Chen Show. Today, we're going to talk about something that, you know, uh, we debated whether to bring this topic up or not because it's always very controversial. Yeah, this thing came out a while ago. Mm -hmm. And when we first saw it, like, it's not obviously, it's not just us that I was talking about. It's created a lot of waves uh, in the Twitter sphere or whatever, the right. Weibo sphere, internet. Um, but I think we should talk about it. I think so too. Yeah, because I, th I think we have some good things to say about it um but definitely uh it's really interesting so here it is right uh this is basically a a local studio hong kong studio mm -hmm. like a design studio. design studio that created these uh graphics yeah that that what in their perspective uh this is how they think hong kong and mainland china are different right i think originally they there was some like they really wanted to differentiate um, to the rest of the world, like, okay, Hong Kong is not China, and here's what we, what, how we differ, and a lot of the things are offensive, um, but that's where you kind of like, that's where there's so many going back and forth on both sides, right? because there's some truth to it, and I think what I want to talk about is what I think the truths are, exactly, and what their perspectives, from. Right. right, right, and uh, Obviously, every time we do this, right. uh, the 50 cent army shows up. Yeah. <laughs> the well, five cent army, whatever the heck they're called. You know what? It's it's fine because like people, you know, we get a lot of comments. I think the first one is interesting because yeah. um, I mean, symbols mean a lot, right? So on the right. left, there's the hammer and sickle, which is the which communist, is the communist symbol. symbol. Yeah. Right. No, China, China's flag today doesn't look like that. It's got the stars with the four stars. Yeah, which is still. Uh, it's it still symbolizes communism right. because if you guys don't know what that actually means, it means that uh, it symbolizes uh, people, I think, uh, different groups. Mm -hmm. They're surrounding the Communist Party. Right. And on the Hong Kong side, is that the umbrella movement? Yeah, I think they're. that's not Hong Kong symbol. I mean, the that, Hong Kong yeah. symbol is like a, I think it's like a But obviously the, Hong, the umbrella right. Movement, movement was like right. such a big thing that exactly, happened over there exactly. and that's what so it's like kind of statement right there yeah. to begin with so they're saying hong kong okay is not this, this is definitely the people that made this were i'm, I'm going to tell you yes it's very one-sided mm -hmm. but again so well you know. th this is obviously from the perspective of the hong kong people right if you look is hong kong china obviously technically it is right but uh, most or uh, not most but a lot of the hong kong these people they feel like well we're hung we're from hong kong right where if you you know so they feel like there's a disconnect between them and the mainland chinese because they feel like from a, uh you know recent historical perspective um and also from a big part from a cultural perspective they feel like they're different so the next one is uh basically government. right the government so the centralized government of china if you guys aren't familiar, it's basically represented by the CCP, which stands right. for Chinese, Chinese Communist, Communist Party. Party. Yeah. And yes, that is extremely true. It rules everything. Right. Everything in China, it's state sanctioned. Right. And if it's not, it's either gonna be or you're or you're it's gonna be. Yeah, let's let's not kid ourselves. Right. Everything in China is controlled by the CCP. Yeah. Everything. Even religion. Even your property. Everything is everything, everything is state owned. Yes. Um and on the charts on the Hong Kong side, this looks like a typical uh, democratic right uh, organization che checks and balances system yeah so next <laughs> is uh media right right uh, so in so, china so going by the same vein mm -hmm. so china also owns all the media mm -hmm. so the major chinese channel is cctv right right and they say uh, china has a tv channel which everyone uh is watching or must be watching which is true right hong kong has a tv channel that no one is watching, which is, uh, what is that, Apple TV? Or? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the Hong Kong one is, but definitely um, I can imagine that Hong Kong's media is probably not like China's media. Right. We know, we know. I can only comment on CCTV. Look, so the people out there, they're like, you don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, I do know because all my relatives live in China. All right, CCTV is literally the mouthpiece of the Chinese government. Well, it's called state-owned media. Right. So there's a reason that's called exactly. state owned media. Exactly. The West knows it. Yeah. Even like, okay, I love like when you read like an article from Western media, yeah. when they quote CCTV, they yeah. will literally say, just so you guys know, yeah. this is China's China mouthpiece. state owned media. They, right. They'll say it. Like China state owned media CCTV right. or China state owned newspaper Xinhua. Right. And there's a problem with that, people, yeah. because then the media, originally, why the media is there is almost like another check and balance mm -hmm. to give the people power to make decisions, to be informed, uh -huh. um, to bring something in light that is bad, corrupt officials, whatever. But if China's trying to hide 
and they do, you know, things that are wrong, then that's a problem, right? And also, like, if you ever walked by, uh, if you ever got, like, I think the Washington Post or Mm -hmm. one of these major publications, I forgot which one it was, and there's a section inside called the China Daily. Right. Uh, If you look, (sighs) check this out. This is really crazy. I think it's the Washington Post. I'm not 100% sure. Well, they actually just sell that by itself. Or is it the New York Times or something? I forgot. There's a section in there. If you lift it up, it's it's called China Daily, right? right? If you look in the top corner or something it says it actually says advertisement right so if you if you don't think about it you actually would think this is something that's connected to the american publication but they actually spent money to put that thing in there as an advertisement but it's news so next is social media Mm -hmm. here they have the weibo symbol Mm -hmm. which is the chinese version of twitter right uh because in china you cannot connect to basically any social media platform you cannot connect to twitter uh facebook youtube um, basically so any of them. Basic f- social media, you cannot... Right. So, look, every time we say that on video, people are like, well, I connected to... Look, you're either <laughs> doing it through VPN right. or you're in that you know Shanghai free trade zone where they right. just allow you to do in that little specific area. Right. But most of China, you cannot connect to these social medias. Mm-hmm. So Hong right. Kong's like, you, you connect to the free world in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong right. obviously has no restrictions. So that is correct. Right. So the next one is pretty much uh, the same email right. system. Uh, Gmail, basically anything Google... Uh, is very much censored or right. unavailable in China. I think uh, there was a report because Google just uh, reconstructed, re- restructured into Alphabet, uh, okay. uh, a new company. Alphabet. Oh, okay. So right away, you know, there was a report that China blocked Alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, right. So uh, Gmail is not available in China. Right. You have to settle for QQ. Uh, and in Hong Kong, obviously, they're saying it's, you know, you can use whatever you want, right. which is kind of, you know, the same as the one before. Like Taiwan. Yeah, right. same as before. So this is the same vein. That's WeChat. Yeah, again, WeChat mm-hmm. uh, is the only, one of right. the only things available in China. Hong Kongers can use whatever, you know, they I want. I mean, sure. I mean, like, if, if you just take it for face value, it looks yeah. like choices. But in those choices is actually a lot of much deeper right. things. So basically what those three things are saying is that online, you, you have a lot less freedom. Mm-hmm in china than you do basically in hong kong it's basically like if you ran a business right right and you don't want your employees to say anything bad about your business or leak any you know (laughs) secret like look if you had nothing to hide you wouldn't care you'd be like yeah talk about whatever you want i run a legit business it's awesome but come you obviously there's something fishy going on there right well one of the things that they want to hide is how toxic the food is, this next graphic. Right, look, we're not saying that you go to China, you can't eat anything where you're gonna die. We're not saying that, but look it up, Google this stuff. I'm we're not that. just <laughs> we're not just saying, look, there is Do a it. ton Do of it. fake, uh, toxic food coming oh, yeah. out of China. I might not live in China now, but when my own family, I have tons of family mm-hmm. that live in Shanghai, other parts, dude, they're even afraid of eating. They're yeah. like, yeah, we can't go out to eat. I mean, like, you, I've heard of glow-in-the-dark pork, fake, Eggs, yeah. uh, fake buns, cardboard fake, buns, fake anything, fake everything. So the next one is Ai Dang Ai Guo, which oh, uh, okay. they, this is the, they say the street banner in China is basically Ai Dang Ai Guo means love the Communist Party, love this country. Right. Um, and in Hong Kong, the ban- street banner is Tian Mie Zhong Gong, which means God will destroy the Chinese Communist Party. Let me just talk about this a little bit here. Uh, first of all, let's understand something, get something really clear. Right. The Communist Party is a political party. Right. It does not represent China. Right. A lot of people can't get no, they that. they can't differentiate that. Yeah. Because it's it's just like me saying, hey, you're in the U.S., right? right. Uh, do you love the Republicans? No. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Then you don't love the U.S. No. What kind of sense is that? No. Sorry. That's just a political party. Right. That doesn't mean the country. So right. it's kind of crazy because this is kind of true. Like, in China, you have to love the Communist Party. You do. Before And they beat that anything. into you. They yeah. beat that into you. And that's yeah. true. If, when I was there, every, you know, our pledge allegiance, you know, was to the Communist Party. That's right. It wasn't to China. It was right. to the Communist Party. Right. Like here, we pledge allegiance to the flag right. of to, the United States. the symbol States. of the United States. Right. It's not, I pledge allegiance to the Tea Party. Right. Everywhere else, if you just mention communism, people are like, all right, that's not, that's, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Right. But it's only like, good. only like a lot of the Chinese people, it's ingrained in their head that if you right. talk bad about communism. Right. You're talking bad about China. No. That's not the same thing. Next one is basically, okay, uh, they're saying when Chinese people take the subway, they basically are rude. They take off their shoes and sleep on right. the seats and Hong Kong people are more civilized. That's basically what they're saying. Right. Uh, obviously, let's not generalize. Um, not every Chinese people does this, but there has been a lot of reports right. about the... Ans- 
civil behaviors of Chinese tourists. Right. So this is where this is where I'm glad we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, because because for me, the on the left, it does happen. It does, it happen. does happen. Yeah. Even people that we know go visit China. They're they're like they'll make fun. They'll be like, yeah, people poop on the street. Mm -hmm. Babies poop on the street. The parents don't care. They're rude. They spit. That's a fact. You can go to China right now, and that stuff happens. Okay. Me saying that isn't me bashing on Chinese people. What what I want to bring to light is why that happens. That happens because the traditional aspects of being a, a morally, ethically good person has been erased from Chinese culture on purpose by the CCP. That's a fact. Chinese Communist Party gets rid of spirituality. You can look that up. Okay, that's a fact. So by doing that, you're actually getting the getting rid of the foundation of becoming a good person. So I'm not saying like all Hong Kong people are model citizens, but I'm just saying that if they have if their traditional culture hasn't been destroyed by the CCP, it means that they have grown up with some semblance of of morality. When Chinese people finish their business, when Hong Kongers okay, so but they're basically saying Chinese people squat everywhere. Look, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's toilets in mainland China. Let's, let's, let's not go that far as right. saying like everyone stands at a toilet seat. Or or they're all, or or maybe just like they don't clean up after themselves. Yeah. Okay. So now it's, you it's, also see little bits of pee. But <laughs> right like, okay. I I haven't been to a Hong Kong restaurant, uh -huh. a Hong Kong restroom, but um, yeah. When, even when I was there ten years ago in China, like it's really it's hard dirty. To find a it's clean dirty. Bathroom. It's true. It's dirty. Well, next one is uh, Chinese people's glass heart is too weak to undertake criticism and Hong Kongers have a normal heart. Okay. It's kind of crazy because when we talk about this stuff here and we're going to get a lot of hate comments on this yeah. video because it is funny because a lot of these comments are going to come from people that left China. Right. And they're going to be like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. This Communist Party is great. Well, why'd you leave? Right. Why'd you leave? Why did you go to another country if you think it's so great? Why didn't you just stay in China? Why are people... I mean, we both have day jobs. My day job is actually meeting a lot of Chinese families who wish to immigrate here. And they, they literally are like, like the parents are like, I'm, look, I can't get out of China, but I, I, would, I want my kids out. Mm -hmm. So why are you getting your kids out? Everybody has a you know, tendency to kind of be overprotective of where they come from. Right. But we also have to face facts. Man, like when we live in America, you know how many times a day we bash our own government? You know how, you know like, I bash my government Everybody all the does time. It. The whole website, the whole <laughs> internet is designed for it. Do you know like our Facebook feeds? It's it's not just Asian. It's everybody like like bashing every single aspect of the American government. It's what we do because we want better quality of life. If somebody says something, I'm gonna agree with them. I'm not gonna attack my friend for being like, you don't love America, therefore you don't love people. You don't love us. Like no. Um, the next one I really agree with. Um, basically, what they're saying is that in China, they teach simplified. In Hong Kong, they teach traditional. Right. Where in this case, this is the character for heart. For, for love, yeah, sorry. Love, they're yeah. basically saying, how can you have love without heart, yeah. which is the symbol in the middle, the right. sheen. This is something I, I, I really you know agree with because traditional Chinese culture is something that's been passed down for 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. And traditional writing system is a very big part of traditional Chinese culture. Absolutely. And when the simplified system came around, yeah, it's easier to write, but basically I felt an aspect of Chinese culture was destroyed. Right. And the one similarity they give is uh, the police. They're saying <laughs> the same. Uh, which but I don't, it's true. I don't, yeah, yeah. Because during the umbrella, I mean, whatever. That, that's kind of funny. That's like a little thing yeah. at the end. I mean, I would say though, because here's the one major thing, because Hong Kong has, th this is why we need freedom of speech, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's assume here that this is correct because uh, the, two, the two Chinese forces are both controlled by a centralized government, mm -hmm. right? And let's say, Hon let's say the Hong Kong police gets a instruction from the Chinese government to do like another, gosh forbid, another 6-4, uh, which is Tiananmen Square Massacre, right? Um, well, at least they, they're reluctant to do that and they don't want to do that for fear that because of the freedom of social media, yeah. they can get out. So at least that's one very good thing to me about having freedom of speech. The comparison between Hong Kong and China is very distinct because, look, Hong Kong is basically like any place in the free world. Right. right? It's, it's just that the proximity of it, it's, you know, it's part of China. Right. Um, so it's, you know, it's supposed to be under a one, uh, one country, two system That's thing. Right. But obviously, uh, Article 23, all these other things that come about where, you know, the Beijing is trying to change all that. Right. Um, but it really kind of gives you a, uh, 
a, a, a look at what China would have been like, let's say, if communism wasn't, right. uh, you know, there, if right. the Communist Party didn't take over China. I mean, they'd probably be bigger than the U.S. By if, now. if you look at right. Hong Kong right. or Taiwan, that's basically what China would have looked like. Right. Times 20,000, You know, if, if the Communist Party didn't right. basically take over the country and change things, I think, for the worse. Right. Um, you would have a more, let's be honest here, you would have a more free country. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll say you, but, uh, you know, I mean we, right. I, because I probably would have stayed in China. My yeah. parents probably never would have left China. Same here. The opportunities in China would have been just as, right. you know, just as uh, just as numerous as as the U.S. or right. anybody anywhere else. Why do we we wouldn't have to leave? Exactly. Uh, there exactly. wouldn't be the crazy population boom because mm -hmm. of the Mao Zedong policies. Right. Um, there wouldn't be the Cultural Revolution. There would no be no sense of danger. Right. Uh, you know, staying in that country, a sense of like you know. Uh, I can't really make a future in this country. That wouldn't be there. It'd just be right. a normal, beautiful country that I would love to be in, that I would love to live in. One day China's uh, government changes, you might actually move back there. Well, anyway, guys, that's just our uh, perspective. Um, and uh, let us know your thoughts yeah. on this in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Later.